I am going to play for you something quite stunning. And this goes to, you know, we've talked before on the program about the pseudo intellectual and anti intellectual movement. And this has come overwhelmingly from the American right wing, although sometimes the left engages in it as well. And one of the things that has been a staple, one of the aspects to this that has been a staple from the right is that thinking too much actually isn't that good. Formal education is little more than liberal indoctrination. And so we shouldn't even really be praising or seeking out intellectualism. But there's another aspect to this, which is making nonsense people out to be intellectuals that they are not. And I have an example of this that is quite stunning. Uh, Tucker Carlson introduced an interview that he did with, I guess, former actor and now YouTuber Russell Brand. Tucker Carlson refers to Russell Bland, Bland, Russell Brand as a public intellectual. Now, I know I know that will come as a shock to many of you. But what is stunning is that then Russell Brand proceeds to rant completely unintelligibly about covid for five minutes and Tucker just sits there looking dazed. Take a look at this. There, there is a lot that I want to talk about from this clip. Let's listen. So as we told you, we sat down yesterday with Russell Brand, the comedian actor and now frankly kind of a public intellectual for about an hour and a half on our show, Tucker Carlson today. We want to share more of it tonight. In particular, Brand spent a lot of time thinking about and telling us about the COVID thinking. lockdowns. Yeah. And the point Russell has thought about it a lot of them was maybe the clearest explanation we have heard of what we've just lived through. Here it is. I think COVID provided a lens through which we could scrutinize yes. the machinery of power and how the intentions and agenda of power are able to play out, coalesce, and let's call it conspire when a crisis occurs. Now, remember, there's two things here that might trick right wingers into thinking that this is deep thought. One is that for the American audience, <laughs> you know where I'm going. Russell Brand speaks with a British accent. And that actually is quite an effective tool. This this applies both to left and right. I hate to say it into making it sound like someone is actually speaking quite intelligently. Uh, the other thing is that he is only feeding back to a lot of the, the, these right wingers the things they already believe. Our tendency, a globalist tendency to increase surveillance, a big tech appetite to capture data and a comparable appetite within government converge, as the great American comedian George Carlin used to say, there is no need for conspiracy where interests converge. It seems that even if at its advent, it was a legitimate crisis, and I certainly wouldn't make any contention around that, it was opportunistically handled in order to enhance regulation and control at a time where regulation and control are increasingly difficult to implement as people are more suspicious of institutional power. So in a sense, the best way to understand COVID, I believe, is to take COVID out of it and right. look at how the institutions both call ignore COVID to understand COVID and government behaved around it. Pretend almost like there was no COVID and then be like, well, none of this stuff made sense if you remove COVID from it. Right. Well, but there was COVID. How did they benefit? How did they utilize it? What narratives did they uh, disseminate and which narratives did they control and curtail? Even with the recent text messages from our health minister at that time, Matt Hancock, you can explicitly see it was exploited. Oh, no, we need to scare people. Is there any way high net worth individuals can get into the country? All these conversations that many people that are cynical about the behavior of the powerful believed were happening were indeed happening. The way that natural immunity was discussed proved to be be true, i.e. that natural immunity is effective. They probably understood earlier than they admitted that natural immunity was effective. And for reasons that well, what note the use of the word probably. What could it be? Uh, what could be the reason that a monetizable solution to COVID was prioritized over a non monetizable? Is there anyone involved in the situation? Well, one interesting aspect to that would be the dramatically higher death rate of people who got COVID rather than uh, unvaccinated versus people who got COVID vaccinated. That would be one interesting reason why you would prioritize the vaccination program that has a profit motive. Let's look at the data. Like, you know, so what it, it was just revelatory, like the apocalypse always will. Be. And, and remember, Tucker Carlson hasn't said a word. We're two minutes in the apocalypse is revelation. 
of all what was always there corruption convergence of interests alliances this is not conspiratorial no. this is the moot recital of economic interests and the ordinary movements of the powerful if, if people can uh, honor one another and yes. talk to one another in good faith and recognize that anybody is like this whole debate between like that I've, that I've sort of felt a little bit around me even for coming here I feel like it used to just be normal that someone in your family would be a conservative and someone in your family would be liberal and someone in your family would be socialist and someone in your family would be trans and someone in your family would be gay and different races are coming together Yes. Is this part of who we are? And if it isn't the part of who we are, it's certainly. OK, so this goes on and on and on and on and on. OK, so a couple different things here. First of all, most of the things that Russell is saying actually just aren't true. And if you really kind of dissect all of this different stuff, you see there's really nothing there. But I want to zoom out and, and talk about this, this the framing that Tucker Carlson gave of saying that Russell Brand is now he's a public intellectual, quite frankly, I think it was is what Tucker Carlson said. Now, what do we mean by a public intellectual? Many of us can imagine sort of like the academic intellectual, right? This is someone who and, and I'm, uh, this is this is the caricature and I understand I'm playing into the caricature, but the idea would be the academic intellectual is someone who if you put a camera in front of them for a TV show, they're not really good at explaining their ideas and they're not concise and they go on and on and they talk about their work and their thoughts in a way that is not relatable to the average person. And they are sometimes seen as 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 uh, um, maybe elite or condescending to the average person. Or whatever, right. So public intellectual would be it's someone who is well known and an intelligent you know, learned person from an academic uh, uh, pedigree of sorts, but who is also contributing their knowledge in the sort of more popular culture, I guess we would say, and is recognized both on the academic side, but also on the non academic and sort of like media side and by members of society in general. So obviously, by that definition, Russell Brand is not a public intellectual, but the bigger story here for me is I've said before, you know, sometimes Marjorie Taylor Greene will rant somewhere and I will say to you all. A lot of a lot of the American right wing sees her as a thinking person and Lauren Boebert will rant or, you know, uh, Ted Cruz will make some statement about a legal precedent during a hearing. And I will say there are a lot of people in the US on the right who see that as what it means to be a thinker. And of course, Russell Brand is very far from really what I would consider to be public intellectuals. Now, public intellectuals today do look and sound a lot different than at times past. So I'll give you some examples of people that I do think are, are sort of public intellectuals. One that comes to mind, and I was just recent listening to some of his podcasts, and, and that's why he's on my mind, Cal Newport. Cal Newport is a PhD computer scientist who teaches at Georgetown. He's been on the show before who writes both for academic audiences and for general audiences about the sociocultural impacts of technology uh, and, and so many other things. He's written articles that would be really for an academic audience, and he's also written great popular books like Deep Work and A World Without Email and others. That to me makes a lot more sense as like a modern public intellectual. And when you when you listen to Cal's podcast, you realize, wow, this is a very different thing than Russell Brand. Cal doesn't have a British accent. I will mention that other examples, maybe Jared Diamond, someone who has done a ton of academic work and and really deep field work and also has written books uh, for popular consumption. This one, I, I'm less sure, but someone like Kazuo Ishiguro, the British uh, Japanese British writer, uh, Salman Rushdie comes to mind. Um, Camille Paglia, even if you don't like her views, hard to argue that that's not, you know, when we talk about a public intellectual today, that's what we're talking about. Daniel Dennett would be another example. So anyway, it's an interesting thing. I don't know if Tucker is is serious when he says Russell Brand is a public intellectual or not. Um, but it's a very interesting phrase to hear him use, particularly when the right has spent a long time sort of deriding the value of public intellectuals until they found someone they can try to pass off as one in order to try to make some kind of political point. Interesting, an interesting uh, uh, use of that term. Imagine for a second that you try logging into your email account only to find that your password was changed an hour ago. 
and then you get notifications of activity from your bank and then your credit cards. That is what identity theft is like. And it's a horrible feeling. And we dealt with it at the show not that long ago. But now I have an app called Aura, which gives me much more peace of mind. Our sponsor Aura is the all in one solution for keeping your online account safe because Aura will scan the dark web for your personal info, password, social security number and you get fast alerts when they find something. You also get fast alerts about credit inquiries. Aura protects all of your devices from malware. Aura even requests the removal of your info from data broker sites. And Aura helps you manage what your kids can do on their devices. You can restrict certain apps, set screen time limits, set focus times when you need them off of devices. Go to Aura.com slash Pacman to try it free for seven days. Your login credentials might already be floating around out there and Aura will tell you instantly for free. The link is down below.